Hey guys, thank you for joining me for tonight's midweek moment. I am looking forward to getting into the scripture with you tonight. Before we start though, I want to remind you to share, hit the share button, and uh, let's get as many people plugged in and connected to what we're talking about tonight. And I want to remind you that we've just started a family series here at New Life, and we're calling it Me, We, and Us. It's a series about the family. I think you'll find it to be inspirational, entertaining, and informative. So make sure you join us on Sunday mornings and take advantage of this new series, okay? All right. Tonight I want to talk about the dangers of presuppositions. Presuppositions. Question, have you ever had a presupposition? I think so. We all have. Have you ever considered how much our world, our society, our country is controlled by presuppositions? You know, a presupposition is a conclusion that you and I come to before we really examine an issue and before we really get all the details. And we all do it. Let me give you a couple examples. Here's a presupposition. Uh, anyone claiming to be an expert always gives the best advice. We know that's not true. There's a lot of so-called experts on TV and I wouldn't take their advice. I wouldn't even take their directions on how I could get to the mall. Presupposition. Anything suggested by a political party that you and I don't agree with has to be wrong and has to be a conspiracy. That's a presupposition. We have to be careful about that. Here's another one. Everything on the internet is true. <laughs> There are, there are people that believe that everything on the internet is true. I mean, if Wikipedia said it, it has to be true. Too many people get their advice, get their counsel, and get their theology, unfortunately, from the internet. Presupposition, it's dangerous, okay? Here's another one. Anyone who claims to be a Christian has to be closed-minded and judgmental. There's a lot of people that believe that. Now, are there closed-minded, judgmental Christians? Yes, but to presuppose that everybody that claims to be a Christian is that way is a dangerous presupposition. Here's the bottom line. Our presuppositions, which really become our biases, hinder our ability to, to discern the truth, to really get facts, to really progress and grow in life, and they can also be a tremendous barrier in our relationship with God. Presuppositions can be dangerous. We have a couple of examples of presuppositions here in John chapter seven. Here's the first one. There were people that said, we know where he came from, so therefore he cannot be the Messiah. Let's look at verse number 25, John chapter seven. So some of the people in Jerusalem were saying this, is this not the man whom they are seeking to kill, talking about the religious leaders wanting to kill him? Look, he's speaking publicly, and they're saying nothing to him. They're not stopping him. The rulers do not really know that this is the Messiah or the Christ, do they? In other words, they don't believe this guy is legitimate. However, watch this. We know where this man is from. But wherever the Christ may come, no one knows where he's from. So, this is a basic presupposition that existed regarding Jesus. He shouldn't be allowed, they were saying, to teach publicly. Why, why don't the religious leaders arrest him? Why do they allow him to have a platform and teach the people? Surely they don't believe he's the Messiah. And then they said, we know where this guy is from. We know he's from Bethlehem. Do you remember when one of the disciples said, can anything good come from Nazareth? He's from Nazareth. He's a, he's a carpenter. He's not the Messiah. This was a dangerous presupposition regarding who Jesus really was. And these presuppositions are so common today, as I mentioned earlier. When we dismiss someone because of their political persuasion. We dismiss someone because of their faith or lack of faith. We dismiss someone uh, because of their skin color or their family name or their gender or rumors that maybe we have heard about them but haven't necessarily validated. It blinds us to the truth. Presuppositions can be dangerous. And today, people literally turn away 
from the message of the gospel because of presuppositions they have about Christianity, about the Bible, about someone they know that claim to be a Christian. And we have to be careful about that. It's dangerous because God is not, God is not taking away their problems or because God's not answering their prayer or, or they don't think God is doing what they think God ought to be doing. Again, it's back to that God in a box mentality. Man, we have to be careful about presuppositions because they can keep you away from Christ. In fact, let me just ask you a question. Are there presuppositions and biases that you have in your life right now in your mind that maybe are hindering your relationship with Christ, keeping you from experiencing His forgiveness or His healing or His provision in your life? Think about it. Presuppositions are dangerous. Here's another one that I see here in John chapter 7, and that is that we have power over this man. The religious authorities thought they had power over Jesus. And we read about it here in verse number 30. So they were seeking to seize him or arrest him, and no man laid his hand on him because his hour had not yet come. These religious leaders thought because they had authority, because they had a title, because they had a, 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 a reasonable amount of influence, that they had power over Jesus, that they were in charge over Jesus. Well, 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 we'll just arrest him. We'll just put him in jail. We'll just stop him. But the truth of the matter is they didn't have power over him. Over and over and over, we have seen in John's gospel where Jesus talked about the timing of God. Back to the first miracle when he said to his mother, my time has not yet come. Jesus never operated on man's time he never operated on the government time. He always operated on God's divine timetable. So even though they thought they had power over him, even though they thought they could arrest him and, and stop him, he knew it wasn't time for him to be arrested or go to the cross. Again, a dangerous presupposition. When we think, and we do sometimes, we think we're in charge. We think that somehow God works for us. Somehow God, God serves us and we can just snap our fingers and demand that He do this or do that when we want Him to do it. Folks, that is so dangerous. That is a dangerous presupposition. But watch this. While some were biased and controlled by presuppositions, others believed in Jesus. Look at the 31st verse. Many of the crowd believed in Him and they were saying, when the Christ comes, he will not perform more signs than those which this man has, will he? In other words, there were people that saw the miracles, heard the teaching, and they believed that he was the Messiah. How could anyone come after this guy and do more than Jesus is doing? He has to be the Messiah. Their conclusion was, this is the one sent by God. This is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. Okay? Now, watch this. Verse number 32. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to seize him, to arrest him. Therefore Jesus said, For a little while longer I'm with you, then I will go to him who sent me. Watch this now, so important. You will seek me, and you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. Presuppositions are dangerous. Presuppositions are costly. And as I said earlier, presuppositions can become a barrier between us and Jesus. I don't think there's any sadder words in Scripture than what I just read. And the word is this, you will search for me and you will not find me. You will search for me and you will not find me. Is there anything more disturbing or sadder than that? Presuppositions can blind us, can prevent us from really finding Jesus and experiencing who He is in our life. So I want to encourage you this week, evaluate the presuppositions that might be governing your life, that might be hindering your life, particularly as it relates to spiritual things and a personal relationship with Christ. 
I love you, my friends. We appreciate you. We're looking forward to seeing you in one of our services coming up soon. Have a supernatural week.